We want to wish everyone a happy Father's Day. All of our fathers here with us today via here in the sanctuary and via Facebook, we want to welcome you and wish you a happy Father's Day and praying the Lord touches and blesses your heart today as we come together. And obviously we want to worship our Heavenly Father. We're so thankful for His eternal love, for His gift of salvation, and His love of sending His only begotten Son so that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. We are blessed to be in the house of the Lord together today to worship Him. So we greet everyone who is joining us via Facebook and YouTube. And all of you who are here today, thank you for being in the house of the Lord. Uh, we want to, I want to ask you to join me standing and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's ask His blessing on our time together in service this morning. And then I'm looking forward to a wonderful time where we worship our Heavenly Father together. Uh, also, Pastors Melvin and Yvonne are here. Uh, Grant are here, our associate pastors, and uh, today is the day we honor them and recognize and just want to show expressions of love and appreciation to them. We're excited for them. We're sad to see them go, but we're excited for them as well. Uh, we know God has great things in store for them as they get ready to uh, transition and pastor the Lighthouse Church of God. Uh, so we're thankful we get to, to have one more Sunday with him today, and he's going to be taking the pulpit uh, here after a while and preaching the good news to us. Uh, you'll, be, uh, you'll see Pastor Yvonne as well. She'll be getting up. But we're thankful to have them here. It's good to see you all here today. Uh, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's ask his blessing today. Amen. Amen. Father God, we are so thankful. We're thankful to you, our Heavenly Father. Lord, for your love, for your grace, your mercy. Father, what an what a eternal example that you have always given to us, Lord, and, and what love and sacrifice is. Father, when you sent your Son, God, to walk on this earth, to be born of a Virgin Mary, God, and to live and work and teach and preach, ultimately your Son would give His life upon Calvary for the redemption of our sins. Father, we thank you for that love. We're thankful for your grace and mercy that you extend to us again today. And Lord, we pray that as we lift unto you, worship God, that your name would be glorified and edified in this place, God. Anoint us, God, and help us, Lord, to sing unto you aloud and anew. Father, a fresh praise from our lips today, God. We want to glorify you and lift you up. God, we pray your blessings upon each and every part of the service. God, we pray for our dads who are with us here today in this sanctuary, those who are with us on Facebook and YouTube. God, we pray for them as well, that, Lord, you would just bless. God, you would touch. You would encourage and strengthen them, God. And Lord, you've called us as men, God, in this day we live, God, especially in this day we live, to be examples and heralders of what love and and compassion and goodness are all about so father help us and encourage us god as well all these all these dads joining us together lord that you would bless them today as well we lift unto you and we thank you for the opportunity we have to lift unto you a mighty sound of praise we glorify you and honor you today in jesus name and everyone said amen and amen let's worship the lord together today amen all right let's stand and sing Changed me, see I'm now a new 
Well, what you gonna do? What you gonna say? I know the truth. I know the way. You think you're a lion, but I call a spade a spade. You're just a kitten and you're running a Sing, God's gonna give my praise. God's gonna give my praise. God's gonna give my praise. Devil, get out of my way. Cause God's gonna give my praise. I'm gonna stand firm, not gonna run away. My God's got my back. I ain't afraid. He's a fire running wild. Yes. He's never been caged. Jesus is the lion that cannot be tamed. Praise. God's gonna get my praise. God's gonna get my praise. Devil, get out of my way. God's gonna give get praise. God's gonna give my praise. God's gonna get my praise. Devil, get out of my way. God's gonna get my praise. Jesus crushed the enemy. Yes. Now he's underneath my feet. I'm marching out in victory. Hallelujah, I am free. Jesus crushed the enemy. victory. Hallelujah, I am free. Jesus crushed the enemy. Now he's underneath my feet. I'm marching out in victory. Hallelujah, I am free. Jesus crushed the enemy. Now he's underneath my feet. I'm marching out in victory. Get my praise, God's gonna get my praise. Devil, get out of my way, cause God's gonna get my praise. God's gonna get my praise, God's gonna get my praise. Devil, get out of my way, cause God's gonna get my praise. worthy to receive all glory. God, this morning we acknowledge that you deserve all the glory, all the honor and praise in this place. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. As we lift your holy name, you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. And you deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. 
For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no There is no one else like you. There is no one. Just the voices sing. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, and there is no one else like you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we do thank you today. Lord, you are great. Your mercies, which are new every morning, God, there is no one else like you. Father, we just bless you today. We worship you. We exalt you. We honor you today. Father, as we come before you, we're thankful that you as our Heavenly Father are good. Lord, you're loving, you're kind, you're compassionate. Father, Lord, you're, you have good, a good will towards each and every one of us, God. Lord, we're thankful, God, that in the midst of chaos, in the midst of pain, in the midst of hurt, God, we can turn to you, our Heavenly Father, finding solace, finding peace, finding encouragement, finding direction. God, reminded of a call, God, that you've placed on each and every one of our lives today. Father, thank you. You are and you do deserve all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Father, as we come before you in prayer, we lift up, Lord, so many, God, in our congregation, those, God, who are struggling with health issues right now, those who are grieving, God. We lift up the family of Ernie Gray, God, and the loss of his brother-in-law, God, asking you to give them peace, asking you to give them strength, asking you to comfort and abide with them very closely. God, we lift up Lawrence Riviera, God, and we ask you, Father, to continue to touch and to bring healing, God, that you would minister, Father, according to your riches and glory, God, that you would complete recovery in his body. God, we lift up Cindy's health, God, that you would touch her. Father, you would minister healing and completeness to her. God, touch Tommy, God, who's been struggling with heart issues. God, we ask you to minister strength and healing to him. God, in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, we pray for each and every one of these needs on the prayer list, God. Lord, those who are fighting cancer, God, we ask you to, Lord, encourage them in the Lord even now. Father, remind them, God, that you're with them, God. And we just believe you, God, to, and ask you to curse every bit of cancer cells that, God, have been attacking them, God. And that in the name of Jesus, God, that you would bless the treatments, bless the procedures, God. Bring healing, God. Bring increase, God. For each and every need, God, those who are not able to be here because of health, we ask you to encourage them as well today. Lord, we lift up these many needs before you. We acknowledge that you, oh God, are our solution. You are our answer. And God, to the, to the hurt that this country is feeling right now, to the pain that this country is feeling right now, to the anger this country is feeling right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, help us, Lord, each and every day to abide by that commandment of Scripture that says to love you with all of our hearts, soul, strength, and mind. And God, help us to love our neighbor, God, as we love ourselves. Oh, God, help us to remember, God, that as we love one another, we are being refined reflections of Christ's love. Oh God, help us today, Lord, in this day in which we find ourselves to be reminded of the importance 
of what it means to be Christ-like, to be loving and kind and considerate and respectful and honoring to those that we come in contact with and those we may never meet, God. Oh, Heavenly Father, help us, oh God. Bring healing to our nation. Oh God, bring healing, Lord, to our city. Bring healing to our state. Oh God, we need your healing power, God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord. You may be seated if you want to turn to your neighbor and give him a good Church of God wave. Or Kempsfield Church wave, however you want to describe that. It's good to see all of you here this morning. We're glad you're here. And we welcome you to just continue to worship the Lord and bless the Lord as, you, as we come together. And we have, a, it, it's, we have sort of a duality that's taking place today. We want to obviously honor all of our fathers. But we're also honoring pastors Melvin and Yvonne Grant, uh, as I stated in the introduction. And uh, here in a few moments, uh, after the video announcements, uh, Pastor Yvonne will be taking the pulpit uh, to uh, share the scripture with us and greet you. And then after she is behind the pulpit, Pastor Melvin will come and preach the Word of God. Before we have the video announcements, I know that today is also a day that while we want to honor and recognize our dads who are here, I also recognize and we recognize as a church body that there are those of you here today who your fathers are not with you physically on this planet, on this earth anymore. Many of you here today have fathers who have gone on to glory and they are with the Lord. Can I remind you that they're looking down, I believe. I just, I just believe that, that they're looking down upon you and, and, and encouraging you to live on life to the fullest, to love the Lord your God, to love your neighbor. They want you to live life and live it to the fullest. But there's pain today as we recognize this Father's Day, and there's pain, there's hurt, there's a grief and a separation of loss or a feeling of separation of loss. And so what we want to take a moment, and I want to ask you to just join me We're going to take a moment of silence and remember our fathers who are not with us. And uh, and I ask you to, in this moment of silence, to also pray for those whose fathers are not with us. Amen. Let's do that as now as if we can. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for fathers who are with us. God, we're thankful for fathers who may not be with us physically, with us today. We're not able to call them on the phone. But God, we were thankful that, Lord, we can call to you in prayer, knowing that, Lord, as they are with you, experiencing the fruits of heaven, eternity, God. Lord, I just pray that, Lord, you would minister especially to those whose fathers have passed on today. Father, I pray that you would encourage them. And Lord, let the loving memories of a cherished past, God, be a very present, near, close, and healing element to their life today. May it bring comfort. May it bring strength. May it bring resolve, God, to live life to the fullest, God, knowing that one day we'll be reunited again to see our fathers. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we lift up those. We ask you, Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy, our Heavenly Father, that strengthens us today. We give you glory and praise for it in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen Amen and amen. Again, thank you for being here. So many wonderful, beautiful faces, even though I can only see half of it because of the mask. Uh, But we thank you for being here. It's good to see some of you we haven't seen in a while. We're glad you ventured out. we got people that came all the way from Pennsylvania uh, to be here today. So let's give them a hand. Good to see Mark's mother with us. And good to see all of you, and glad you're here this morning. We just pray the Lord's a blessing upon you. We uh, want, want His face to shine upon you and give you peace and strength. Uh, Brother Brett, who's with us, brother, we're going to see Brett two times today. He's in the sound booth controlling the video and all the monitor stuff, but uh, he's got some announcements for us as well. He's going to join us via video while he's here. <laughs> Strange days we're living in, isn't it? Amen. Amen. But after the video announcements are done, again, uh, Pastor Yvonne will be coming, and then Pastor Melvin will be coming and sharing the Word of God. And then after he has uh, concluded his message, uh, I will be taking the pulpit back again. We want to just recognize them. I have a special uh, uh, presentation I want to give to them both. 
Uh, so let's, let's have a wonderful time together, and I'm excited to hear from the Word of God as pastors Avon and Melvin Grant preach the Word of God, and, and, and we hear from them. But right now, let's turn our attention to the video announcements. Good morning, Kimsville Church, and thank you for being with us today, whether you're physically with us in the sanctuary or you're joining us online. I also want to make sure to say happy Father's Day to all of our dads that are with us today. I have a few updates for us about things going on at Kimsville Church. First up, I want to remind everyone that Mark and Carrie Moore have been doing a great job on our website putting together the Kids for Christ at home while we haven't physically been meeting for the Kids for Christ services at our facility. Uh, while we hope for those to come back soon, in the meantime, you can check out the website and on there you're going to find a great lesson, you're going to find games, you're going to find worship videos, and a lot of things you can do at home with your kids. So make sure you check that out. Kids, make sure you bring your parents to that site and they can show you everything that's there. I also want to give an update on our missions giving so far this year. Due to your faithfulness, we have already received over $15,000 towards missions for the year. And as you can see from this chart, that's actually put us halfway towards our goal, actually over halfway towards our goal. So thank you so much for that. Even in the midst of everything going on right now, you've still been faithful in your giving and in supporting missions as we want to do here at Kimsville Church. Now, an important thing to remember is while we are all dealing with uh, the situations going on right now as well, all of our missionaries are as well in, in the locations that they are at. Some of them have been locked down for extended periods of time. So we want to make sure that we continue to remember them in our giving as we go throughout the year, and we will be able to reach that missions giving goal by the end. We also have an exciting event coming up, and with more information on that, here's Sister Crystal. Hello, Kemsville Church. I would like to invite you to a very special event. On Saturday, June the 27th at 2 o'clock here at the church, we are going to have a Listen, Learn, and Love Ladies Forum. It will be an opportunity for us as sisters in Christ to share our lives with one another, the stories of what we have experienced and the things that we've overcome in our lives. I think it will give us a chance to better understand one another and to see what it's like to, to face challenges that we may not have faced in our lives. I think it's a great opportunity for the Holy Spirit to really work in the body of Christ and bring love and healing and reconciliation. I ask you to please make an effort to be there on Saturday, June the 27th at 2 o'clock. And please be in prayer for this event. We believe it is a God-ordained opportunity for us as the body of Christ to listen, learn, and love one another better. Thank you, Sister Crystal, and I hope as many ladies as possible make plans to attend this relevant and awesome event coming up this Saturday. I also want to remind everyone that as we've been in this pandemic period, we have made efforts to move our services where we can show them online, both through the live stream we're doing right now and recording that, that goes on at 2.30 p.m. But we're only able to do that because of our great tech team that supports us and is able to put all of that together. But for that to move forward in the future, especially as things reopen and volunteers get reassigned back to some roles they had before, we're going to need more people to step up and be willing to get involved in this ministry. And the great thing is, is this doesn't mean that you have to be there week in and week out. We can find ways where if we have enough people that volunteer, you can just be doing one week a month. Some of the roles you can be trained for include our cameras, video producing, sound, and our lyrics and sermon slides. Any of those roles would be great to get some additional volunteers in, and you can be trained, and, and we'll make sure that we fit it with your particular gifts and talents. If you're joining us physically, you'll see that in the pew in front of you is a Connect card. Now, these are great because they allow you to let us know of any prayer requests that you have that we can add to the prayer text or prayer slides or if you have any upcoming surgeries or procedures so the pastoral staff and council can be praying for you. If you are joining us online, you will find a digital connect card on our website that you can fill out either now or throughout the week to let us know of any prayer requests they can put in the same spot. Um, on the other side is the, uh, if you're a first time visitor or guest, you can let us know that you were visiting us here today and we'll make sure that we follow up with you. Well, those are all the updates I have for this week. Make sure to check our Facebook and Instagram pages throughout the week and you can find more information as we post it there. Good morning, everyone. It's good to be here today. It's been a while. But I have thoroughly enjoyed the uh, Facebook Live uh, messages and uh, whoop, getting an echo. So um, I just want to read the scripture. And if I start talking, I'll start crying. So I'm not going to do that. 
Um, I do want to say that I will miss you all, but this is not final. This is, um, this is just um, reaching outside the four walls, going to a different place, but still in Christ. So I'm going to be reading today from Romans 5, verses 12 through 21. I'm not going to have you stand. If you want to, you can, but I always forget to say, have a seat afterwards. Oh, yeah, do this. Stand with me when I finish. Please, have a seat. Okay, so five, starting in verse 12. I'm going to be reading from a uh, version. It's called the Remedy Bible. So... Start verse 12, Romans 5, 12. Therefore, the infection of distrust of God, which deformed humanity's heart and mind with selfishness and fear, and which, and with, and which results only in death, infected the human race when Adam accepted Satan's lies about God and broke trust with him. This infection of fear and selfishness in a, is inherited by all human beings, so all are born infected. This is revealed by the fact that before the written law was given, the infection of distrust, fear, and selfishness was already present in the world. But this infection of distrust, fear, and selfishness is not diagnosable without the law. Nevertheless, even without being diagnosed as infected with this terminal condition, humans still died all the way from the time of Adam to Moses, even those who did not break a specific command. Like Adam did, revealing that the problem is the infected state of our mind and not a legal issue with God. Adam, the first man, the first man being the conduit through which the infection entered humanity, also represents the one man who is the conduit of the antidote that cures all those who accept it. But the gift of the antidote is not like the infection. For if everyone is born infected with a terminal condition, because of the choice of Adam, how incredibly effective must the antidote supplied by Christ be, since it cures all who take it. Again, the gift of the antidote is not like the result of the breach of trust. Adam's breach of trust infected all humanity. Therefore, all humanity is diagnosed as sick and dying. This occurred without each individual choosing to be infected. But the antidote which came after humanity had been severely damaged and deformed by selfishness and sin brought cleansing, purification, health, and complete restoration. If, by the choice of one man's distrust, selfishness and death permeated all humanity, how much more will those who accept the remedy that Christ has achieved experience restored trust and complete healing to live forever with God. Therefore, just as Adam's distrust infected humanity with the fatal condition of fear and selfishness, so too Christ's choice to sacrifice self achieved the life-giving remedy for all humanity. Just as Adam's choice infected the human race with a terminal condition, so too Christ's perfect life has brought the remedy to heal all who accept it. 
The written law was added so that the infection of distrust and self and selfishness could be more easily seen and diagnosed. As the exposure of sin and the selfishness increased, God's willingness to heal increased all the more. That's an amen right there. His willingness to heal has increased all the more. So that just as distrust and selfishness brought deformity and death, even more importantly, God's gracious remedy brought by Jesus Christ results in complete healing and life eternal. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless his word to our hearts that we may be changed. He gave me a lot of gifts as a child. Gave me a horse. Gave me a car. Gave me a lot of things. But there's a gift he gave me that I think is wonderful for every father to give every son. Last Saturday, when my father opened his eyes for the last time and visualized Nancy and gave her such a wonderful, wonderful gift, when he closed his eyes, that's when I realized the gift that he gave to me. The gift that he was going to be with his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He had back in 1988 on a flight from Washington, D.C. to Point Magoo told me about his love of God, his love of Christ as his Savior. I didn't know then what it all meant, but I certainly, certainly know now. I can't think of a better gift for a father to give a son. I've used that passage before, but I wanted to find the video. And uh, when he said that uh, the best gift that his father, obviously his father was able to give him anything, but the best gift he can remember that stuck with him was the fact of the love of God and that he's taken it further to enhance teaching it to his kids. I, um, I want to share something with you, and obviously wasn't planned, so I want to make sure it stays within my time limit. But um, I wanted to uh, be able to share something that my niece, this is my youngest brother, uh, third oldest child, and um, that she posted something this morning, it really touched my heart. And I have texted her, I said, I'm going to use this as my opening in my, um, I texted her, I said, I'm going to use this as my opening and my message today. And it says, and this is her text to her father, my youngest brother. And I'm sure all of us have received some beautiful gifts. I'm not saying it's not doing the ones that you've got, because your kids know you. And so, but I want to share this to touch my heart. You are a great father and a mentor to me. I hope you never forget it. Happy Father's Day, Dad. Thanks for being there for me. Thanks for showing me the way, and, it's, and thanks for being patient with me even when I made it difficult for you. Believing in me, encouraging me to dream, and being such an inspiration presence in my life. I love you, and you are the best father in the world. Hashtag Father's Day. Now that's for my niece to my, that's my niece to my brother. And I cheer, I sort of cheered when I was reading it. And the reason why is my brother has four kids, and, um, Two of the young ones, and I don't know if I can use the term rightly, but I'm going to say borderline artistic. They don't have the social skills to make it. She just graduated from um, high school. Uh, my brother said, I never had, no, she had the intention that she wanted to go to college. And my brother graduated from University of Maryland, and there is a branch off school called um, uh, Montgomery College, and that's the community college of that college. And she has plans to go to college. And so when you look at that and see the, the destiny that he's put in, I, I text him and I said, little brother, your, your daughter hit the nail, hit the nail, hit the head of the nail with a hammer. And said, that's what I see in you, that father that encourages. And so I think that's great. Our scripture, the, the, our scripture this morning, Romans 5, 
um, 12 through 21 that Pastor Yvonne read, deals with inheritance or legacies left for us to receive. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to share the word. And Father, we thank you that we come together in, in everything that we're dealing with in this world, that we're still able to come together via video, Facebook, uh, the, um, anything you have, the word cannot be quenched. It cannot stop it. And Father, that the opportunity we have today to share the word. Father, thank us and help us that it, we are receiving it to make us change our walk and our heart and the way we think. Amen. One of the definitions of inherited, uh, inherited is, that I looked up, is the generic character transmitted from parents to offsprings, taking collectively. Paul talks about legacies we receive from two people and an institution. Paul reminds us that human conditions, when we describe this legacy left to us by Adam, the law, and Jesus Christ. Paul uses Adam and Jesus to teach us some very important issues and lessons. The issue in this passage is that only two perfect men have ever existed, Adam and Jesus. Adam was created perfectly, but the exercise that of his free will sinned it. Jesus existed in perfection, was born in perfection, and died in perfection. Each one has impacted the human race and gently, greatly, and very difficult, but relative, same ways. Let's start with Adam and see the effect and the um, conspiracy that Adam sinful act. Sin entered the world through one man. In the fall of Adam, sin was active um, principle or power gained interest into the human race. And the two results followed. First, sin, corruption entered into Adam's heart and life. Adam transmitted sin and into the life stream of human race, corrupting all people thereafter. All humans are now born into the world with an impulse toward sin and evil. Because of Adam, sin, all of creation was affected. Before Adam sinned, the world was a perfect place to live. After Adam sinned, the world became a fallen place to live. Because of Adam's sin, God imposed condemnation and consequences, earning our life by sweat and sorrow. Instead of being able to partake in the tree of life, we now face physical and spiritual death. Because of Adam, our ancestors' sin has, be, has been passed to all of us. Just as we see the tendency for the, um, the tendency of color of our eyes, the color of our hair, our height, our build, and other physical attributes from our ancestors, we also receive the tendency to sin from our ancestor Adam. You see, once sin entered into the world, it's like the Carraris uh, Pandatoria that we have bought in this world today, just like it, we're going through this today with the virus. And this virus is evidence that so far indicates that the virus is spread from person to person through small respiratory droplets. That's similar to how Adam has sin opened the door for sin and death to spread like a virus through the entire human race. But now we can declare guilty. But how can we declare guilty for something Adam did thousands of years ago? Many feel it isn't fair for God to judge us because of Adam's sin. Yet, each of us confirm our heritage with Adam by our own sins every day. We have we have same sinful natures and are prone to rebel against God, and we are judged for the sins we commit. Then we talk about the legacy of the law. 
The question is this. If all mankind has not, was not present in Adam and did not sin in Adam, then why did man, why did people die from Adam to Moses before the law was given? Now the point is simply this. You see, people died because of sin. Sin does not become a legal transgression with a penalty attached to it until there is a law of transgression. If you were driving, if you, those who would travel, if you're not familiar with this, this is a road stretch in Germany that has posted no type of um, speed limit on there. So if you were driving in Germany on Autobahn, you could go as fast as you want, foolishly, dangerously, sinfully fast. But there is no penalty because there is no speed limit posted. As soon as they are posted, then there's a law. And you're breaking it, and you will be punished for it. Paul, uh, Paul touches on something here that explains in full in the detail in chapter 7 of Romans, the purpose and the role of the law. Paul was shown that keeping the law does not bring salvation. Here he adds that breaking the law is not what brings death. Death is the result of Adam's sin and the sin we all commit, even if they don't resemble Adam's. Paul reminds us in his readings, in his, uh, his writing, to his reading, that thousands of years of law and not yet been expiratory given to the yet men have still died. In other words, it wasn't, they, they didn't die because of the law, all right? They died because of the sin. The law was added, he explained in chapter 5, verse 20, to help people see their sinfulness and to show them the seriousness of their offense and to drive them toward God for the mercy and pardon. The law brings it out. It actually allows you. If I was using a magnifying glass at this point, and if I was using a magnifying glass, it does not increase. And if I were to put it on, my, on the sleeves of my hand, I might see different patterns in this shirt with the magnifier. It doesn't change it, but it just magnifies. And that's what the law does. It magnifies what we've done as, as sinful people. Death ranges from the time of Adam to the time of uh, um, Moses. This was true in Moses' days, and it's still true today. Sin is a deep discrepancy between who we are and who we were created to be. We weren't created to be sinful, but because of Adam, we have adopted that. The law poses, points out our sins and places the responsibility it squarely on our shoulders. But the law offers no remedy. When we are, uh, we are convicted of sin, we must turn to God for healing. We must turn to the Jesus Christ himself. The law was never intended to provide salvation, but to convince people of their needs for it. If I had, if, like I said, if I had that magnifying glass, it would magnify the difference in what I'm doing. So in other words, it makes things look clearer. You know, when we started this year out, we talked about 2020, that this was the year for clarity. And that's what the law was. It brings clarity to who we really are in Christ. There's a part in, the, um, in that scripture in Genesis where it talks about where, where God came and asked Adam, where art thou? And as a kid, I couldn't understand that because anytime I did something wrong, my mother always reminded me that God sees everything. So I couldn't understand why God couldn't see what Adam had done. But I now realize, and um, I'm going to say, because my younger sister is here, but uh, I'm going to say something. That I used to have this thing, and I'd play in my room, and I would have my train set and my car set. I had a whole city. I had my army men, and that was my world. And you had to tiptoe to get around in that room. And my baby sister would come in and, don't touch that. You know what she did. She'd just pick it up just to see if I got mad. Mom, come get Bridget. She's bothering my stuff. And mom would never come. She would yell, 
That's all right. God sees her. Well, I didn't want God to see her. I want Mama to see her because Mama saw her. Mama would spank her. God wasn't doing anything. So when I came through the scripture, I couldn't understand what it was. But you know what I found out in my growth and my spiritual walk and studying? God knew what Adam had did. God wanted to put the magnifier on him and let him know if he knew what he had done and give him the opportunity to repent. I come sometime look at that, and I was thinking about that this morning as I was just in my prayer, and I'm trying to remember, and I got to go back and study it. I'm trying to remember if Adam ever repent. Because all I can remember Adam said was, I was afraid, I was naked, and I hid. And then when God asked him about that, he came up with the world's first excuse. The woman you gave me. The woman you gave me. I didn't pick her. You gave her to me. Caused me to sin. Now, we talk about Father's Day. We know one thing as men. And here's the first thing. Adam had the first opportunity to say, because you gave me her to lead, I had the opportunity to be able to repent and tell her this is not the right thing to do, but he fell short of that. So these are things that as we grow, we learn these things from God. So let us take a look secondly at the effects Christ of Christ's righteousness act, the legacy from Christ, from Jesus. We've seen the effects of Adam's sinful act. Now the effect of Christ's righteous act. Adam was the counterpart of Christ. Just as Adam was a representative of the created humanity, so Christ, the representative of new spiritual humanity. We are all born into Adam's physical family, the family line that leads to certain death. All of us have responded, have reaped the results of Adam's sin. All of us. As much as you say, I'm a Christian and I'm Christ-like, that's what Christ Being a Christian, it means Christ-like. And I'm going to throw this in here. We as a body, as a body, I don't mean cancer body, but as a body in Christ, we have forgotten that. We have forgotten that the world should not be showing us how to get along, how to put differences in color and everything behind us. We have forgotten it's been the opposite. The church body should be showing the world how we should act. It's the church body that should show them how we get along, that we are one blood, that we are one of, of one person. And when we do that, we represent Christ. This is a time that the body needs to come together and show the world what heaven's going to look like. This is that time. I'm going to throw a little something here, and I hate to kind of change the mode, but I just want to let Tracy know, we all bleed burgundy, brother. It doesn't matter what you're on the outside, we all bleed burgundy. <laughs> and maybe a little blue. <laughs> but it's, this is a time that we really need to step up. Let us not get wrapped up into our differences on the outside. Let's look at the inside, because you know what? Christ does not look at us from the outside. Thank God. He looks at it from our heart. Blessed are those who yearn to be righteous. Not blessed are those who are righteous, because none of us will be there. When he says blessed are those who yearn, he says, I am trusting you by what you want to be because I'm looking at your heart. In your heart, and everybody in this room, I know you want to be a better father, a better husband, a better wife, a better child, a better Christian in our walk. We don't always quite do it because of the nature of sin that we inherit through Adam. But because we yearn to be better, God looks at our heart and he says, I can work with that. But we as people, we want to look at the flesh and say, I got a problem with you. I have gone off my message. I am so sorry. (laughs) I'm going to get back on it. But it all ties down to this message. It all ties down to inheritance. It all ties down what I read earlier about being a father. What is the legacy? Not only is the legacy that we leave, 
what is the legacy that we are able to have the option to pick? We have the legacy of Christ and the legacy of Adam. See if I can pick up on my notes. We were all born into Adam's physical family, the family land that leads to certain death. All of us have reaped the results of Adam's sin. We have inherited his guilt, a sinful nature, and God's punishment. Because of Jesus, however, we can trade judgment for forgiveness. Jesus offers us the opportunity to be born into his spiritual family. The family line that becomes, that begins with forgiveness and leads to eternal life. If we do nothing, we receive death through Adam. But if we come to God by faith, we receive life through Christ. Where Adam sinned, Jesus lived a perfect life. Hebrews 4.14 tell us that he was tempted in every way just as we were, yet without sin. Where Adam brought condemnation, Jesus brought justification. 2 Corinthians 5.21, he made him who knew no sin to be sin in our behalf that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Acts 13, verse 39, through him, everyone who believes is justified from everything you could not be justified from by the law of Moses. Where Adam brought death to all who were descended from him, Jesus brought life to all who would place his faith in him. John 3, 16, we all know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that all who would believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Where Adam was uh, disobedient to his father's will, Jesus was obedient to his father's will. Philippians 2.8, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. As we close, as I start to bring this to a closing, as a sinner separated from God, you see his law from below. As a ladder to be climbed to get to God. Perhaps you have repeatedly tried to climb only to fall to the ground every time you have advanced one or two rungs on that ladder. Or perhaps you, the sheer height of the ladder seems so overwhelming that you have never even started up. There's, there's a time in my life where I was struggling. I knew what a spiritual head of the household meant. I read about it. I prayed about it. And in the discussion, and what we call in the Christian world a heavy discussion, my wife was reminding me that what the spiritual of the household meant. And from my heart, truthfully, I said to her, I'm not sure if I want that. She, it caught her off guard. What I was really saying was, I realize how important that is in the view of God's eyes. And I was ashamed, almost like climbing this ladder. I wasn't sure if I can climb it and maintain it because I might fall. Because I thought I had to be perfect. But over time, I climbed that ladder and fell, and I climbed that ladder and fell. And that's what I talk about um, in the, either case. What will leave you, release you should feel to see Jesus offering with his open arms to lift you above the ladder of law and take you directly to God. Once Jesus lifts you up into God's presence, you are free to obey out of love, not necessity, and through God's power and not your own. You know that if you stumble, you will not fall back to the ground. I'm going to repeat that. If you stumble and God's over to lift you up, you will not fall back to the ground. Instead, you will be caught and held in Christ's loving arm. That's powerful. That's a message. That's a message for my fathers who feel they haven't made it yet because they keep stumbling. That's a message for my brothers and sisters in Christ when you said, I can't be perfect because I keep stumbling, I keep making the same things, but you keep trying because you're not falling back to the ground, you're falling back in Christ's arms. 
How many times as a kid have we fell and our mother or our father caught us? They didn't let us fall to the ground. I saw um, there's a little YouTube or something like that, and I think it's on TV. And I think it's a, a, a you know, sometimes the videos, the, these things are so good you forget the product. But it's the video where you see a kid falling out of a bed, a crib. I got one person in here already that kept climbing out the bed. And I'm talking about the crib. And you see this father dives over and catches that baby. And they show like three times where uh, I think a mama, a baby's falling off a, um, a, a playground equipment, and she grabs him with one arm and keeps him from falling to the ground. That's what Jesus does for us. He, we fall, but he doesn't allow us to fall to the ground. We fall into his arms, his loving arms. And what does a parent do? What, what we do as a parent? We take that child and they're crying and we brush them off. We pray for them. We kiss the womb. And all of a sudden that kid gets back and I'm ready to go again. That's what Christ does for us. That's what he does for us. He allows us to be able to keep trying, but instead he catches up in his loving arm. Notice that both legacy between Adam and Christ involved a tree. When Brother Brett and I texted him, and he was getting my slides ready, you know, the presentation, and he gave me two, he always gives me an option, which one do you like? I said, I'm liking the one with the tree in it, because that reminded me of what I was studying in this message. Both legacies involved a tree. One, a tree in the garden. The other, a tree formed into a cross on Gargathia. Adam brought death. Jesus brought life. 1 Corinthians 15, 22. For as, as in Adam all died, so also in Christ all shall be made alive. 1 Peter. Verse, 1 Peter 1, verse 3 and 4. Peter says, pause, praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into the inheritance, into an inheritance that can never perish or spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you. Don't face the legacy of death from Adam without the legacy of life from Jesus Christ. You cannot help being in Adam, for this came by your first birth, over which you had no control. But you can help staying in Adam, for you can experience a second birth, a new birth from above, that will put you in Christ. That is why Jesus said, ye, must be born again. It is my sincerity hope that in this explanation of today's message will enable you to focus on the main points that Paul makes about the way in which Jesus' death overcomes sin and death and opens up the way for us to be right with God through our faith in him. We all succumb to the spiritual forces that are at work, that is at work in our world. And to this day, these are principles, the forces of sin and death. They came, they, they caused mayhem in human life and society. They will work their way into the life of God's people simply because while we, we're still alive, None of us has yet escaped the pressure of evil and sin to be found within this sinful world. Moreover, the end of all things has not yet come, and so we have not yet found our way to the promised eternity life. Our promises heavenly come. Let us remember that we live in this world 
but we are not of this world. Our strength comes from the, and we are anchored, and our strength comes from the word of God. And so when this world goes through chaos, we need to understand that it doesn't affect us. I hear people say the biblical days, and they, I, I understand what they're talking about when they talk about the biblical days. They are talking about when Christ walked this earth, and I understand that. But if we don't understand that we are not, li- that if we don't understand today that we are presently living in the biblical days, I challenge you to pull out your Bible, and I want you to read through Revelation. When it says in the latter days there will be signs of wars and earth and phantoms, are we not living that now? It says in the latter days there will be wolves dressed in lamb skin. You don't understand that. That means there's going to be some false teachings that's going to be going on. You've got to know your word. I had people say, well, how do you know when someone's speaking something false that's not in the Bible? I said, when you know your word, there's something in your spirit just gets, just gets kind of messed up inside. And you say, that's not right. Now, you may not be the preacher back, but the Holy Spirit, because Christ lives in you, when you hear that false teaching, it's going to shake something up in you. And you got to understand that. Today, the word wants to get watered down. We can't allow the word to get watered down. We have to get to a point where we stand. We need to be bold. If one of your prayers, if anything, should be, God, let me bold, be bold in your walk, in your word. So when I hear false teaching, I can stand above and say, that is not true. My Lord Savior says this. We have to understand that. We have to be sincere who we are. We need to understand that we need to think about the members of your family. Think about God's love for them. Pray and thanks and thanks to God for the family into which you have been placed. I remember having, when I was in the hospital, I had a, you don't think he talks, but you got to get to know him and he real, he would open up. And I remember Brother Cliff, he came to talk to me when I was in the hospital. Uh, a year or so ago. And we got, he started sharing me, if you remember, we had him in prayer when he almost lost his daughter. And you may not know his daughter and you don't see his daughter, but uh, I want to, she's in her 20s, 30s, in her 40s? Wow. And she's been confined to a wheelchair. She doesn't communicate, her parents are obviously going to be able to communicate. A few of us when she was healthy, or used to come and visit. And I remember telling Cliff, isn't it amazing that God choose you and Dinah to says, you know what? I'm going to send this beautiful young lady to this world, but I need the right parent. I need the right parent. Why not send them to these two? Because I know they will love her as long as she's on this earth. And if you ever talk to them, you, you'll know that this is not something that happened. This is something that in the earlier stage that they didn't want it to, because they were complications, they, obviously, the world says, terminate the birth. And these parents said, no. God gave me, gave me her, and we're going to take care of her. When I look at my brother, who he works hard, my younger brother, and, he's, and, he, and he sees this, who is dealing with prostate cancer now. But he gets out there, and he just gets with his kids. And I used to think he was kind of hard. He'd be asking, how you doing it? And they were stumbling and get upset, and he would encourage them to the point I felt he was, like, pushing them. But look at the results. Thank you, Dad. Even when I was difficult, you had patience with me. Thank you for helping me to dream. That's what we are as fathers. We are blessed with a gift. I wouldn't be a father if God didn't bless me with two strong young men, which is the old one has given us two beautiful granddaughters, who I have one granddaughter, she's just feisty, and she gets it from her grandmother. I can say that because she's not in here. (laughs) But look at the gift that we have, and I'm going to wrap up here. But let me close with these questions. To which family line 
do you now belong? Have you trusted him as your savior from sin? If you haven't, are you willing to do it right now? If there's any good reason to put that off another moment. God doesn't promise us tomorrow. I'll get better tomorrow. Before I can go to the gym, I need to get in shape. Before I come to church, I need to take care of my sins. Church, let's not forget something. The church, we should have a sign in front of us. No, don't get me wrong. I have family members that are in the medical field. And through prayer, I had a, a, a cousin of mine, which is my second cousin, my cousin's daughter, who was a nurse and got I mean, she went through the full fledge of the virus, so we thought we were going to lose her. She just went back to work, and it's hard for her because there were several of them that had got, uh, this, had got the disease. And one of them passed away. And I remember my cousin, when I used to work up in Connecticut, when they lived in, Connecticut, in, South Carolina, in North Carolina now, and um, she was probably about four or five. And she always locked on me, too, and always used to kind of play with my ears. And I would get off of work, and she was all on me. Her mother kept saying, leave, him, leave Cousin Melvin alone. And I kept saying, it's OK. And uh, she always called me Superman. And um, she's in her 30s. What's with the four? Everybody keeps in their 40s. <laughs> they all get old. I guess somebody's getting old. But anyway, the thing, she's in her 40s. And I remember her saying to them, and I was texting her, and one day, God woke me up at 5 in the morning, and I couldn't sleep. And so I'm sitting there, and I get this text, boom, at 5 in the morning. It's from her. She's in her hospital bed. She's texting me. And um, I remember her saying at the end of our text, and she said, I'm going to be a different person when I come out of this. And her Christian walk as a mother and I told her, I said, God woke me up to be ready to hear your text. Well, she was having depression. She was in the hospital not thinking she was going to make it. And I was trying to encourage her as much as I can just through text, as much as I wanted to fly down there and give her a big hug. But we must remember that we as a church probably should say, and there should be a sign out there on the street that says, heroes are working here. Why? Because this church is just like a hospital. We welcome the sick. We want to come in and we want to see them heal. How are they going to be healing? You know, we used to have a sign that said, help, hope, and healing. This is a house of help, hope, and healing. The word gives you hope. We're going to help you, but the word heals you. And so we, we, we need to remember that, that this is a hospital. So the people that comes in the door should be sick. We're not going to heal them. We're just going to share the word of God with them and the word of God said them. Let's bow our heads and our hearts pray for them in this present. With our heads bowed, let me ask you again. Have you made that decision to trust Christ as your Savior? Have you acknowledged your sin and believe that he died in your place, paid the penalty you deserved, and put all your hope for eternity in him alone? If you're not sure you've ever done that, I plead with you to do it now. We, we pray that you would do it now. Eternity hangs in the balance. Would you express your faith for him? Because of social distance, do it in prayer right where you sit. And now let me lead you into a prayer. And you mean these words from your heart. Just think of it. God knows what goes on in your soul right there where you sit. 
Lord, Father, pray this with me. Lord, I'm a sinner. I do understand that my sins separate me from you and leads me into eternal death. But thank you that you sent your son to Calvary to die in my place and bear the penalty of my sin. And Lord Jesus, I'm trusting you as my savior. Come into my heart and save me from sin. Will you make that decision today? Will you ask God into your heart today? Will you open up your heart and say, I've been coming to church for years. I consider myself a Christian. But through the word and the message today, I still need you in my heart. We all do. I believe this is a prayer that even as a seasoned Christian, we should pray every day. We should ask God continuously to be in our heart. Lord, I pray that those who have not yet availed themselves to your marvelous grace, which is greater than our sins, will in these moments make that decision and put their faith in Lord Jesus Christ and receive his gift, his gracious gift of eternal life. And that all of us who know him will rejoice in him for that wondrous grace that rescued us from sin. Yes, grace greater than all of our sins. We thank the Lord for this opportunity. We give him grace and glory. We we'll honor him for everything that he's done for us. And we give you glory. And in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, amen. Thank you for the opportunity. I praise God for this. Pastor Yvonne, if you don't mind, if you feel comfortable doing so, could you join your wonderful husband on the stage? I'll try to keep social, I, the social distancing thing, I understand the importance of it, but I'll tell you in moments like this, it's, it's really difficult. So uh, please don't take the oddity of uh, us trying to still stay six feet apart, okay? This is just, we're trying to, especially being on video. But I have a presentation that we want to share with uh, Pastors Melvin and Pastor Yvonne uh, Grant. It's just a token of our uh, we want to recognize and honor you, and so I'm going to, I should have had this out. My wife would have told me I should have done this before, and she would be right. We have, a, have a, we have a plaque that we have prepared and want to present to them. It says, in honor, in honor and recognition to associate pastors Melvin and Yvonne Grant, for over 26 years of devoted and faithful ministry leadership at Kempsville Church in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Now I wanna make a note, Pastor Yvonne has actually been apart for 33 years. Is that correct? Go on the math, but they've been a, a part of this church. I know they were uh, together. Uh, God brought them together and they've been a part of leadership ministry here. And so we wanna present this to you. Uh, Pastors Melvin and Yvonne, can we give them a wonderful tribute today. Amen. Let's honor them. Any other time I'd be hugging you like a bear right now. But thank you, Pastors Melvin and Yvonne. You have been faithful. And God has honored your faithfulness, your ministry. And I know the Lord has opened up a tremendous door of ministry to you both. Next Sunday, you'll be taking the pulpit at Lighthouse Church of God. I know technically tomorrow you're starting, but uh, be taking the pulpit. And God, I just believe in sense in my spirit, God has great things in store for you. All this time, he's been preparing. And I just sense we're going to hear great things uh, going on at Lighthouse Church of God. And so we honor you. We bless you both. We thank you for your leadership. 
your faithfulness, your ministry, your love. It's been a pleasure of mine to work with you the last five years. And we just honor and recognize you and thank you. Can we give them one big, one more big hand of appreciation? Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you. I just want to say one thing. Um, I'm truthful when I'm post when I say it's a bittersweet. Uh, when Pastor first came here, he was talking some things that have been in my heart for a while. And I said, oh, this is going to be great working with him. And I didn't know Jesus had other, uh, God had other plans. I said, when you've been here 27 years and you've got familiar faces and familiar places, and I remember when we were meeting in the little brick, red brick house before we did the add-on. Yvonne, obviously, when he was meeting, Yvonne was meeting when they, before they even built the church. He was meeting when it was in the school or the, in the school. And so when you come here and you're used to knowing things, you're coming here, there's going to be a lot of familiar faces, a lot of new faces I was hoping to get to know, uh, but we still will be doing, working together. Amen. And um, I've already been told by the, uh, by the state overseer that if I need a problem, go see Adam and Crystal. So, yes, I will be on there. So we did it. And this is also the, from my, my wife and I, our family. Thank you. Thank you. We love you both. Can we give them one more Thank hand clap? You. Let's let them know how much we love and appreciate them. Thank you. Can you hand that to them as well? And uh, what we want to do, you may be seated, uh, as we get ready to prepare in our giving. Now, uh, we have, we've done our very best to adhere to the uh, uh, the recommendations by our governor, and so we will continue to do that today. Uh, we have, uh, when we announced that this transition was taking place, we invited you to uh, take an opportunity to, if you want to prepare a card and an expression of your appreciation uh, to pastors, uh, Melvin and Yvonne, you can do that. If you want to, uh, if you don't feel comfortable making the contact personal to personal, uh, you can put that. Uh, we have a basket, I believe, right beside the boxes, but you can also use the boxes because uh, depending on how car big your card is, it may not fit in the box. Uh, but what we're going to do is uh, this morning, if you and if you didn't bring a, a gift or a card with a, a, an expression of your appreciation, uh, but you want to express your appreciation to them in the offering this morning, just just make a note on the memo or the tithing envelope, uh, love expression towards pastors Melvin and Yvonne, and, and we'll make sure that they receive that. Uh, but we want to give you an opportunity to give to the Lord. You can do that even as you text to give. I think the texting to give gives you an opportunity. You can actually in that texting process uh, just say expression of love and appreciation to pastors Melvin and Yvonne. Uh, but also cont continue to remember the Lord in your giving and tithes and offerings and missions work. I'm excited about that missions report. That's wonderful. Amen. Uh, we're over halfway there. We're going to believe God in the midst of COVID, in the midst of all that's going on. Uh, we, I've been uh, pastors uh, uh, Wayne and Phyllis Wozniak are still in uh, strict lockdown in Peru. Uh, they uh, will continue to remain in strict lockdown. Uh, in fact, to my knowledge, there will not even be international flights allowed in or out of Peru until, well, the last I heard it was the end of August. Uh, but that may be moved up now to October. I'm not sure. But uh, continue to remember our missionaries in prayer uh, and also in your giving as well. Let's, let's worship the Lord in our giving. And uh, make sure if you take an opportunity at the end of service, I know we got to do the mask and the social distancing. I think it's important to consider one another's health. But go by at least and tell them how much you love and appreciate them. And uh, we thank them for their ministry. And happy Father's Day. Thank you to all of our dads. We thank you and we appreciate you. Sister Pastor Peaches, you want to share something? Go ahead. I hate to interrupt, but the Spirit of the Lord directed me to pray for the grants, and I just can't leave without doing that. So I don't want to be too close, but if you would stretch your hands toward them. Oh, God. Father, we just thank you right now for your presence. You are great and greatly to be praised. We honor you this morning. We lift you up because you are God and there is none like you. You ordain things in order. And so this morning, God, as we come into your house, oh God, the place where your presence dwell, we ask the Holy Spirit as you have launched the grants to a new direction. We pray that you will guide them.
Give them wisdom. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I pray that you will protect them. Oh, God, and you will just lead them, Lord Jesus, in the path that you have prepared for them. Lord, it's great work that is ahead. But I ask God that you'll give them the wisdom, oh God, as you gave to Moses, oh God, to direct the children. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll do so for the family of the grants. God, I know the work will be great, but I know that your wisdom, oh God, is pure. Your love is pure and it's unconditional. And so I pray right now in the name of Jesus for direction. Lord, I pray that those people, Lord, the brethren, will be receptive to them. They will work with them, Lord God. And there will be no division in the body. Oh, God, we call on you this morning. Because we know that in you, God, there is mighty work ahead. Lord, let the field be green for them. Lord Jesus, the harvest is white, but wide, but the laborers are few. I pray that you will prepare laborers for him. And you will strengthen him as he go forward. In Jesus' strong and mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Plan on doing that after the offering, but amen. Amen. Anytime it's good to pray. All right, so what we'll do is we're going to give an opportunity to give in the offering. And then with that change, of course, uh, after the offering, Pastor Chris, you'll close us out then. Uh, but thank you all. Continue to remember the grants as they step into this uh, lead pastor role. And we are trusting the Lord and going to hear great things that God's going to do through their ministry. Amen. Uh, pastor Chris. Amen. Let's stand together. We're going to, as we close this song, um, this song really does serve as a wonderful benediction. But it's also a prayer of blessing that Pastor Melvin and Pastor Yvonne, we want to direct uh, your way this morning. Uh, so let's worship together. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Let's sing that much together. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And we sing our
you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 and we sing amen 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 we sing amen amen favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 and we sing generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 amen let's pray together and now let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Thanks for being with us today. We'll see you next week.